Greetings to the participants of ICCS 25. My name is George Ageli and I should like to talk to you again as usual about direct electrical energy production, which is, uh, in my opinion, as a result of catalytic fusion, as all cold fusions are some form of catalytic fusions, but uh, I shall talk about that uh, a bit later. At first, we should like to show you two tests. At first, uh, uh, we are showing a still simple looking system. You see the discharge tubes and, and uh, three color emitters. All of them are rather uh, hidden. Later, I will show you in more detail uh, this uh, sophisticated system. The uh, <clears throat> essential part is what you see is a spark uh, tube. It is the fusion reactor uh, and uh, I dare say that it is fusion simply because uh, there are always uh, carbon traces and boron traces uh, along uh, uh, the path of this park. Uh, the phenomena itself is uh, rather uh, low temperature, that is around uh, room temperature. Uh, the <clears throat> second system uh, is even more simple. I will talk about that uh, later. We shall show you at first how we pump down the system that is sucking the air out of the discharge tube and then after we shall fill it with hydrogen. Usually around 0.3 up to 0.6 bars, this is our usual range. We could use much higher pressure, however, than uh, much higher uh, voltages should be used, then uh, our devices, uh, due to the strong uh, sparking, our devices are suffering all digital equipment, including the oscilloscope, uh, gets uh, all of a sudden uh, false uh, signals, practically unreliable, above the 3 kilovolt uh, uh, voltage level. So what you will see uh, only the thermometers and one thermometer is uh, uh, for the input uh, energy and the other is the output and uh, from these uh, differences uh, we shall able uh, to calculate the input output energy ratio which is in this case uh, crudely roughly uh, 300 uh, percent. In the second uh, test, which is much more simple, uh, we found a, a parameter set which is not difficult to find where the efficiency is roughly 100 uh, percent that is the input electrical energy and the output electrical energy is roughly 100 percent. Though I have to emphasize that we neglect uh, in this uh, equilibrium the slight uh, uh, heat uh, which is uh, turned uh, on the heating of the cathode. Uh, it is necessary with all uh, sparking that is completely neglected and we neglect also the electromagnetic radiation into the space which sometimes we use a neon tube and the neon tube uh, a 40 watt neon tube is lighted uh, the first half emits light but it is extremely difficult to estimate how much energy is dissipated on the neon tube. Therefore, we, we neglect that also completely. So all in all, you have seen uh, roughly how the system looks like. 
And now I shall talk uh, a bit uh, uh, more detail on the on the devices itself. Anyone who has seen ICCF 24 presentation will remember this simple uh, device with an input and output uh, oil calorimeter and the uh, reactor tube was uh, a small uh, aluminium spark uh, tube and uh, more sophisticated version was uh, manufactured some half a year later uh, this device uh, again uh, with a changeable uh, spark gap and uh, anyone could have access uh, to the tube itself and the input and output colorimeters and the input output colorimeters were rather big bulky and, and slow colorimeters however they were extremely sturdy uh, we built four of these uh, uh, units and we gave it uh, to different uh, uh, experimenters like the Italians uh, Guido Porci and Dave Nagel and Alan Smith and uh, Zoltan Kovac and later on when we feel uh, confident enough we are prepared uh, to give uh, these uh, devices anyone who is interested in this subject by the way because it is easier if you start measuring uh, a, a fully functional device when then it's easier than if you do uh, uh, yourself with, with all the problems. The key uh, of this uh, whole direct electric energy production is the reactor tube and the spark gap uh, itself. Uh, the electrodes are made of aluminium usually but its surface is rough and this roughness is important. I shall talk about this uh, later. Several construction have been tested. Uh, several volunteer engineers contributed uh, to this uh, endeavor and uh, all these part gaps are tunable so we are able to change continuously this park gap during the action and it has a very important uh, effect on the efficiency also we use peristatic pumps uh, usually and uh, they are simple uh, to make and very re reliable as you see and the uh, pressure gauge is also usually very simple this is our more sophisticated uh, uh, colorimeter the resistor is there and uh, the thermometer and there is a heat conducting glue between them again this is uh, under development uh, a new device with three colorimeters and inductivities uh, to uh, shepherd away, sweep away the, the sharp uh, peaks uh, into a separate circuit. The most simple system is like this. Uh, as you have seen uh, yesterday, uh, this represents the discharge tube, which is a switch itself on and off state. There is a vacuum pump and a hydrogen generator and uh, the roadless uh, this is a resistor uh, of the as a load just a simple ohmic resistor and the relax oscillation like here uh, it is the the most simple you can imagine the fuel inside the discharge tube could be dry hydrogen dry deuterium wet hydrogen and wet deuterium and even it works with wet air uh, when the humidity is very high, 
Moreover, we were able to run the system with propane, uh, propane uh, butane uh, mixture, which is easily available for a, a spark igniter for smokers. It contains lots of hydrogen. So practically anything uh, containing hydrogen uh, is good enough simply because uh, uh, the uh, <clears throat> uh, the process with the help of uh, catalysis is so strong that it doesn't matter which hydrogen isotope we use. In fact, deuterium, uh, pure deuterium, was uh, not better than than pure uh, or dry hydrogen. The effect appears uh, as a series of uh, very steep. Uh, uh, sparking. I mean, steep. Uh, uh, if you, uh, we, if we watch uh, the voltage on the oscilloscope, uh, so this we call as uh, wolf teeth. Uh, as you see that uh, uh, the uh, frequency is not uh, not permanent. It is changing gradually, slower and slower. In our opinion, uh, when these condensed plasmoids, which are uh, conglomerate of millions of electrons, so when they explode, uh, they create these short uh, transients, very very fast transients, and this uh, gives the excess energy. In the second test, which you have seen previously, uh, such Wolf teeth were not visible, or it were just very, very pure. Uh, the main task of all this research to optimize this process, how to make uh, as much wolf teeth as possible, make them very high amplitude and uh, should contain lots of energy. What we found out in our practical test if uh, the pressure is lower, then the number of these wolf teeth, uh, these birds, uh, are less. However, their amplitude could be much higher than that of the input uh, voltage. On the other hand, if, uh, if the voltage of the system is higher, like this, uh, then uh, the voltage of these uh, bursts is lower, but there are a number of them. Uh, these uh, wolf teeth cannot be explained by any uh, textbook electrodynamics, so the circuit does not allow uh, these kind of transients. These are the specific uh, uh, results of uh, fusion, that is uh, the explosive uh, force of, uh, of uh, fusion and uh, when fusion happens uh, these uh, electrons locked inside uh, these condensed plasmoids are just flying away with lots of excess energy. As uh, these birds, as you have seen, are very sharp, uh, we must prevent uh, these birds uh, to get back towards uh, the power supply Therefore, we use a diode and an inductivity as a choke. The energy balance calculation grossly <coughs> underestimate the real COP as uh, uh, some of the burst energy uh, will return to the relaxation capacitor and uh, all the dissipated heat on the cathode is uh, neglected completely. We use aluminium cathodes and anodes uh, because they are cheap, uh, so due to severe financial restrictions. There are many, many other uh, possible candidates among uh, alloys, but the original cathode of Henry Moray uh, were uh, made from sulfur, lead, copper and aluminium, and Nikola Tesla used, by the way, silicon carbide. The 
excess energy effect is due to uh, this condensed plasmoids. We use this expression. However, each uh, inventor or discoverer used uh, different uh, expressions because they were unaware that some other inventors and explorers, scientists uh, found uh, the, the same uh, electron collection and therefore we use uh, Lucy Jaitner's uh, uh, phrase condensed plasmoids. Our opinion is that uh, this direct electrical energy uh, generation is due to catalysis and uh, by the way all LENR effects are due to some other forms of catalysis as a, a wide umbrella. Uh, the electron uh, clusters uh, are uh, catalyzing a process where a proton and an electron and an antineutrino plus some excess energy uh, of uh, 700, 882 kiloelectron volts create an ultra cold uh, neutrons and an evidence of ultra cold neutrons are available in our reactor tube and uh, the other big question how come that uh, three particles uh, get together uh, in my opinion uh, antineutrinos are always around us uh, a number of them with a, a low energy level and this was the insight of Alexander Parkhamov. The engineering aspects of the catalysis uh, are extremely important because all these pseudoparticles, uh, all these different pseudoparticles, uh, different, uh, they catalyze different uh, outputs. For example, uh, uh, cracks are creating only heat mechanical uh, chemical energy can be created already with these sparks and electrical energy uh, can be generated only with condensed plasmoids. Transmutation though can be generated more efficiently uh, by dusty, transient dusty plasma. In our tests uh, with the simple uh, three-part uh, unit. Uh, our best uh, COP has been around 2.5 uh, Mach 3, some, uh, sometimes rarely uh, higher. It is very easy to have a COP of 1, which is unusual and anomaly in itself, because the efficiency of sparking according to textbooks is much less than 1. The test method of evaluation will be detailed by Sebastian Domoslai right uh, behind after my lecture and it is a sophisticated uh, system. We have to pay the price of uh, a simple technical layout by figuring out the mathematical algorithm of input-output calculations. Perhaps the most important slide is this, uh, that is the transmutation of hydrogen into boron and beyond carbon. Uh, Cambridge University made a Raman spectroscopy study of our cathode and they found what we thought uh, carbon traces, uh, they found boron. However, uh, British scientists before 1914, uh, First World War, found uh, helium and neon in, uh, in hydrogen uh, sparks as well. The, uh, the only step which requires input energy is the creation of neutrons, but after that when we have ample uh, and enough neutrons, we can have practically all kind of of uh, trans nuclear transmutation and uh, carbon is solid, boron is solid, therefore 
uh, <clears throat> they can be found. Beryllium is very hard uh, to find uh, a stable uh, isotope, uh, therefore not visible and, and very hard to find. But anyway, there are a number of possible transmutation paths uh, to find and each element requires a different kind of uh, diagnostic device. The dust fusion uh, requires some additional comment. Dust fusion uh, consists nothing but rotating uh, highly charged uh, particles in the plasma. And uh, individually rotating highly charged particles are nothing but quantum matter. And quantum materials are the new buzzword of solid state physics. And there are a number of publications, very important new publications on this field, like uh, topological phases of matter, new particles, new phenomena, and ordering principles, and dust fusion, and, uh, and uh, also the qua or quasi particle condensed plasmoids are sort of macroscopic quantum effects and uh, modern condensed matter physics uh, they, they are published by Cambridge University Press or I may recommend also Zagoskin's uh, monographic quantum engineering theory and design of quantum coherent uh, structures all our LENR stuff is, is about uh, uh, this uh, quantum matter, long range uh, uh, interactions uh, and uh, quantum entanglement uh, in an unexpected, bizarre form. So when uh, highly charged uh, uh, dust particles, which necessarily rotate, they cannot do anything else but rotate and, and oscillate, are distributed among uh, plasma. They have a new collective uh, phenomena. They behave as quantum ma matter. They show a macroscopic quantum uh, uh, effect. And due to this, uh, there is an extremely enhanced uh, transmutation of all kinds of very heavy materials, including uh, lead and bismuth. While uh, the generation of cracks uh, generates uh, the least useful quasi-particle because they are formed only during the crack formation, uh, Condensed plasmoids uh, have a much longer lifetime, even minutes or hours, and therefore they are more versatile. Therefore we can generate uh, heat, chemical energy, mechanical and electrical energy, and the sweetest is of course electrical energy. Uh, and uh, it is not by chance that this is the oldest uh, LENR method published by academic researchers, but they were not aware that these are macroscopic quantum uh, effects. They were not aware that the long-range uh, interaction and uh, catalytic uh, uh, fusion, in fact. Thank you for your attention.